Because there, there was a season of my life uh, a while back. I was like 19 or 20, and my, my home life wasn't that great. Uh, and it, it wasn't that it was bad all the time, but there was just times when it was really bad. And it got to a point uh, where, like, I had some friends. I had one friend who just told me, like, hey, if you ever need to just get out of your house, uh, you can pitch a tent in my backyard and just whenever you want. I had an open uh, invitation. And um, I had some other friends that were praying about it. And I, I don't bring it up to bag on my parents. I love my parents. I'm really grateful for them. Uh, and I'm, I'm grateful that we've all grown. Uh, and I know there are plenty of people that have endured and dealt with a lot worse. Um, but all that to say, to, to just set the scene, it, it wasn't good for a while. And uh, during that time, I got a call from Mark Hoffman, and he said, hey, David, I'd like you to house sit. So I, I go over to his house, and uh, he shows me everything around. And normally when you house sit, you have to feed a dog or some animal. If you're house sitting for the Hayes family, then you have to feed tarantulas and poison dart frogs and things like that. Pray for them. Uh, it, if, or you have to water a bunch of plants, right? That's, the, that's why you get house sitters. And I didn't have to do any of that. And so the Hoffmans were gone for a week, and I lived at their house for a week, and I didn't have anything to do. And then they got back, and I'm like, sweet. I didn't break anything, and I left. And it, I don't know when I found out later on. I, I can't remember exactly. But I asked, like, why did you have me house sit? What was that about? And I remember Mark telling me, well, we knew things are kind of rough at home. And so we just figured we, you could use a break. And so we just had you over, uh, figured we'd give you a week off. And I, I think about that because it was such an incredible gift. Like I didn't, I didn't know that's what they were doing and they didn't have to do that. But where I was at, at the time, what it meant to me was that they, they saw me, they had heard me, they valued me, uh, and they showed such incredible hospitality to me without ever actually being home, you know? They, but they opened up their home to me in my situation, and because of that, uh, it, it was just this incredible thing that I, I'll hold on to forever. I'll bring that up because tonight I don't want to talk about feeling at home when we're not at home? Like when was the last time that you really felt at home somewhere that wasn't your home? And more importantly than that, when was the last time that you helped someone else feel that way, where they were at? I want to talk tonight about radical and God-given hospitality. You know, in hospitality in the Bible, it was a big deal. And so I want to, we're going to flip to Luke 11 in just a minute. And in this passage, Jesus, his disciples came to him and they said, Jesus, uh, will you teach us to pray? They wanted to know how he prayed. And so he does that. And you guys know the story. That's where he, he introduces the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven. You, you know how it goes. And then usually we end the Lord's Prayer, and that's the end of the, the segment, the passage. But Jesus doesn't end there. So we're going to pick up right at the end of where he taught them how to pray. And he, he, it says in verse 5, he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him at midnight. Now in Bible times, midnight, you know, they went to bed when it got dark. So this is, this is our 2.30 a.m. I don't know the last time you got rudely awakened at 2.30 a.m., um, I'm a really mean person if you wake me up in the middle of the night. Ask my wife and then pray for her. Um, so it says here, suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him at midnight and says to him, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine has come to me from a journey and I have nothing to set before him. And from inside he answers and says, do not bother me. The door has already been shut. And my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. That's kind of what I would be like. Uh, Jesus goes on and he says, But I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. 
you know, hospitality was this big deal. It's such a big deal that imagine you, someone shows up to your house and you, you don't have anything to give them. And so your response is, I'm going to go wake my neighbors up. I don't know your relationship with my neighbors. My neighbors, I have a pretty good relationship with them. I do not want to go bang on their door at midnight or 2.30 a.m. and be like, hey, I, I need a cup of flour. Right? Can you give me some, some bread? I, that would just be awkward or it'd be weird. I would feel uncomfortable. But in this day, the way it worked is you, you didn't know when you were going to show up. You're traveling and you have miles to travel and you don't know what's going to, what's going to happen over that time. So you would show up somewhere, but you also can't carry everything. And whenever you traveled somewhere, it, it wasn't like you're going to be there for, you know, dinner and then go home. You're often traveling and you're going to be there for a few days or a few weeks. And so it's expected in this custom, in this time, that if you show up, that your guests, you're going to show your guests great hospitality. You're taking care of someone. More than just taking care of them, they're vulnerable. They need you right? It, they can't just call an Uber and go back home. So then, and this idea of hospitality, it comes from this word, it, it's philoxenia, which means to love, right? Philo, uh, Philadelphia, it's like the beginning of that. But xenia, have you guys ever heard of xenophobia, the fear of the unknown? That So this is a combination. Hospitality literally means to love strangers, and what that means, it doesn't mean you can't show hospitality to someone you know, but the heart of true biblical hospitality is showing someone love and providing for them when it's not reciprocal. It can't be returned. You're not doing it because if you, if you hook them up here, you know, they're going to hook you up somewhere else. Or if you help them out in this situation, then you know you're going to be able to to get it back somehow. But, but it's this attitude, this demonstration of love that cannot be reciprocated, cannot be returned. And isn't that the love, the hospitality that means the most? Like when we get that, when someone gives us a gift and it's just beyond what we could give back or what we deserve or what it's just out it's so beyond what we uh, could imagine those are the gifts that mean the most right if if i come up to you and give you a dollar it's not gonna mean much right that like i think of a millionaire if a millionaire gave me a hundred bucks it would mean a lot more to me than it does to him right but it, it was like it's not crazy but when we get something that we know means a lot. Sac it was sacrificial. It stands out to us. We used to go down to Mexico a lot as a church, and we still do every so often, although COVID's made it difficult. But there's this family down there, R Roberto. Uh, oh, man, I cannot believe I'm forgetting her name right now. Who knows it? Here, that went down there. Maricela. Maricela, if you ever watch this, please forgive me. I love you. You are awesome. This family, like all the time we would be down there, and they would just, uh, they would open up their phone, uh, their home, they would cook for us. There was a time when I would lay on the concrete. That was like, I'd, I'll just sleep on the concrete in the church or on their floor, and they would, they would not allow it, right? They once like made this whole bed because it, it was just not acceptable to them. And I'm like a young man. My back was good. I'm like, I don't care. But to them, it was not acceptable. That, it was powerful. You know, my prayer is that we would, at some point in our lives, we would know the power of hospitality. But more than that, we would show it to other people. You know, we are called to radical hospitality. As, Timothy, as Paul is telling Timothy like how someone becomes a leader and the qualifications that it takes to be a leader in the church, he says, uh, and you guys don't have this for these verses, he says, they, they must be an overseer, they must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, temperate, prudent, respectable, hospitable. Like it was right there. If you want to lead, you have to know hospitality. You have to carry it out. You have to practice it. Later on, 1 Peter 
I, this is another verse you don't have, sorry. It, he says, above all, keep fervent in your love for one another because love covers a multitude of sins and be hospitable to one another without complaint. We are called to show people this type of love, to make it to where they feel at home. And, and that's not always in our homes, right? We can do that. You, you guys have been to a business where you feel at home. In, in fact, there are a lot of businesses that do this really well. You go in and they welcome you and they, they make sure you feel like they care and value you and your opinion and they do everything you can, they can to take care of you. The question is, how often do we do that to people? How often do we do that here at Foothills or at Common Ground where someone shows up and we help them feel at home, like we value and care for them. Hebrews 13, 1 through 2 says, Let love of the brethren continue. And verse 2, Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by this some have entertained angels without knowing it. I love that verse. Quite literally, there are times where we could entertain, where we can host angels without us knowing it. And I, I've heard, I've been a Christian long enough to hear random stories of people blessing others and, and doing something sacrificial and then turning around and taking care of something and looking back and they're gone. And you're like, what the heck? And, and maybe it's, it's nothing. I'm not saying every time that happens, it's an angel. I have no clue. We do know though in the Bible, this happened. In Genesis 18, Abraham showed incredible hospitality to these strangers, and it turned out to be God. Not even just an angel, but the angel of the Lord. You know, later on, Lot goes to these drastic and unimaginable measures to show hospitality to, to what we now know were angels. And there's other, there's other examples throughout Scripture. But we don't do it. Here's what's wrapped. I don't want you guys to go out just show, showing hospitality to everyone, hoping it's an angel, right? Like, I need to do what I can just in case an angel passes, and I want to make sure that I take care of the angel. The angels, they're, they're okay. They're taken care of. They don't need us. But what's rad is when we are able to show hospitality to someone and treat them like they're Jesus. Not, not so that we can say we hosted an angel, but that we can show them that I'm, I'm going to value you and care for you and, and help you feel at home as if you're my Savior. You guys know that, that passage in Matthew 25. We're not going to read it all for the sake of time. But, but Jesus says in heaven, God's going to separate. Well, he, in judgment, he's going to separate those who get to go to heaven and those who don't. And he's going to say to some, it says in Matthew 25, 34, then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And the righteous will answer him, Lord, when? And, and then they repeat everything. Lord, when did we do those things? And the king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them. I want to bring this up today because we get to, as Christians, demonstrate a type of sacrificial love, a hospitality to others. And others that need help, whether it's they're sick or they're poor or they're hungry or they're thirsty or they're depressed or they're lonely or they're angry or you, you fill in the blank. In fact, we can often think about the times that we were in a place of need and hurt and desperation. And, and if you were there, it's quite likely that your friends have either been there or will be there 
or are there? And that's, that's where we get a step in. We are called to show that radical hospitality. And, and again, we don't need a home for that. More than a possession, more than an action, hospitality is an attitude. Again, for the sake of time, I'm not going to dive into as many scriptures as I would like to, but we see this demonstrated in the Good Samaritan. You know, Good Samaritan, there's this one guy who gets hurt, he gets beat up, left half dead on the side of the road, and it says in Luke 10, 30, Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem, Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among robbers, and they stripped him and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. And by chance, a priest was going down on that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite also, when he came to the place and saw him, passed on the other side. But a Samaritan who was on a journey came upon him, and when he saw him, he felt compassion. That's what caused the Samaritan to act. You guys, I know many of you know the story and the, the ways that he provided for that person. But it began with this compassion, this hospitality, this, this idea that I'm going to help take care of this person. And in America, I don't think that comes easily to us. I was talking to, about this with some of the home group pastors, and I asked them, like, what, what are some examples you have of hospitality? And so they started listing them out, and every single one came from overseas, from somewhere else. That's, that's tough. And even, I, I think the South, they're known for their Southern hospitality. San Diego. Not us. Why is it that the people that have the most seem, it, it seems like they hold on to it the hardest? It, it doesn't make sense, but it's absolutely true. And then where we're at, you're, you know, we in America, our homes are our private domain. They're our sanctuary. They're our shelter. Like, stay out of it. Sometimes we can make our cars that. Sometimes we can make our lives that. And you just keep people at an arm's distance. And if hospitality is something we're called to radically, and if it really is an attitude, like I believe it, then it, it begins when we, it, not, it doesn't begin when we open up our home. It doesn't begin when we open up our cars. It, it begins when we start opening up our lives and our schedules. And we, that, that is the beginning of real radical hospitality is where we say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you in. And in doing that, then we get to, to bring value to them and hear them out. But the catch is, so, so we're called to hospitality. We can have that attitude. But what we hope to give or provide is beyond us. And this is the catch, right? Holy hospitality, God-defined hospitality, it's beyond us. I think about that guy. Jesus said in Luke 11, suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him at midnight and says, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine has come to me from a journey and I have nothing set before him. You know, that guy had, did not have what his friends needed. He, he, he was out. He had to go somewhere else. He, he couldn't provide. Now, on my own, what I can give people, I, can, I feel like I could be semi-hospitable. -hosp now, I'm not the best. But even if you are phenomenal at that, the type of hospitality God wants you to, to demonstrate goes beyond you. Because we're not talking about a uh, earthly or a physical hospitality, at least not that's not the goal. You, sometimes we can get where we want to go by providing the physical. 
But what God calls us to is to demonstrate a hospitality that goes beyond this world. And so this guy in the, the parable goes and has to go to, to someone else and bang on their door and request it. And thankfully, we have someone we can go to as well. This whole passage before Jesus gives this parable about the guy who, who has to wake up his neighbor rudely, what was he teaching his disciples to do? To pray. And then he goes off on, on what seems like a tangent, but then Jesus, being Jesus, continues on. And he says in verse 9, So I say to you, and ask and it will be given. This is the same passage. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Now I suppose, to you, I suppose one of you fathers is asked by his son. Sorry. Now suppose one of you fathers is asked by his son for a fish. He will not give him a snake instead of a fish, will he? Or if he's asked an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more so will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? My next point, and I'm going to circle back. My, my next point is, is simply this. God is our host. And here's what's rad about what God calls us to do. He says, I want you to show hospitality. I want you to show radical hospitality. I want you to, to live it out, first in attitude and then in demonstration. But then what I want you to do, the, the ways I want you to demonstrate that, the things I want you to provide, you don't have. But you can always come to me. I can be that person that you go knock and keep knocking and ask and keep asking. And if you're persistent, yeah, I think about Jesus, like if we're knocking on his door saying, hey, give me a loaf of bread. I just picture Jesus chuckling and go, you know what I could do with a loaf of bread? It, it's, he's there. He's ready for us. And we can always and continually go to him. The question is, are we? You know, when we have an opportunity that comes to us, if someone walks in those doors that's never been here at Common Ground before, we have a few things we can do, right? Uh, we can cover up what, whatever our inefficiency uh, with human effort. Like we, we can say, all right, you're, you're hurting or you're lost or you're lonely or you're, you're whatever. You're struggling and I'm going to give you me. But if you know if, if you tried that before, you recognize that we fall short all the time. I'm not good enough. If you ever come to a counseling session with me, and you're telling me what's going on, and, and you're there to receive counsel, I'm going to be doing two things. I'm going to be listening, and I'm going to be praying. Uh, because all the time, I'm encountered with people who tell me stuff, and I'm thinking, Jesus... Uh, they found the wrong person. I don't know why they're here. Um, and the Lord's faithful. You know, I, I get credit for things that it's, it's not me. It, it's definitely not me. But I'm grateful when I go to God, he is, he's so consistent to use me. And he can do the same for every single one of you. You're called to demonstrate this, this virtue, this quality that, that shows people you value, you care, you love them. And, and you do it by opening up your attitude, your life, your schedule, sometimes your bank account, sometimes your home, depends what's going on. But whatever need it is that, that you're providing, ultimately there's a greater need that Jesus can answer. And the question is, do we go to him or do we try to do it ourselves? I think about sometimes uh, people ask me for help and I either like try to answer and I just, I don't know how to phrase this uh, in a way that's good for the pulpit. You know, you just talk at your rear end. 
uh, and you're just like, you're just doing it on your own, that's not good. You know, you can cover it up with some clever, whatever, deception. Or, or we just run away. How often do we see a need and we, we feel inadequate and then instead of going to the God who can answer and provide our every need, instead of doing that, we book it or we cross to the other side of the road or we, whatever it is. I'm, I'm curious, when was the last time you had an opportunity to do something that was a little beyond you? And are you willing to ask the Lord to bring those opportunities up again? God is our host. You know, in one of my favorite passages in the Bible is the Upper Room Discourse. And in John 14, it says, Do not let your heart be troubled. And he's talking to the the disciples right before he gets arrested. Like, if their hearts are troubled now, he goes on, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would not have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you myself, to myself that where I am, there you may also be. Do you have a room in our Father's house? If you've given your life to the Lord, you do. If you have dedicated your life, you said, I'm going to die to my old life, my old ways of doing things, and I'm going to live for Jesus. And I recognize that I'm a sinner, and I need Jesus, because he died on the cross to cover my sins, and as I I believe in him and his resurrection, and I live for that, you you understand, as I live for that, I'm born again, I'm a Christian. If you have have done that, and, and not only in word, but in deed, if every part of you has done that, then we have a room reserved for us. Jesus said it. And so if that's the case, if we have something waiting for us, then we could be a lot more generous with what we have here because that's coming. We know that's there. And, and so we don't have to worry as much about holding on to everything here because we have something in store for us. Whatever God gives you is not for you. That's what's rad about this whole transaction. God says, hey, I want to come into your life as your host, and I'm to provide, and I'm to take care of you. But as I do that, the things I give you, I want you to give them away. And as I come into your life and I give you you value, and I see you, and I I give you salvation, then you get to live your life here on earth differently because things are taken care of eternally. So the hospitality we get to show, the way we get to demonstrate love to other people, we can do it radically because the most important things are taken care of. They're established. Matthew 10, 8 says, freely you received, so freely give. In uh, finance, there's this, these terms, that there's abundance thinking and scarcity thinking. Have you guys heard that before? The whole idea of abundance thinking, like there's more opportunities, there's more, more to, to be had. It, it's real optimistic. And scarcity thinking, scarcity thinking is like, I need to do everything I can to keep what I have, right? Finance dude, am I doing it right? Yeah, decent, all right. We get to approach everything with kingdom thinking, which which is this, it's kind of like abundant thinking, 
but it's not for us. Because our lives, they're not our own. And so as we get to approach every interaction or conversation or transaction or, or whatever it is, we get to approach that with this kingdom mindset, which not only is we can give and give freely because we have received, but then we can trust that what God does with that will go beyond what we can imagine and think. You know, there's times when we can demonstrate hospitality and it's not that big of a deal to us, but it changes the life of that other person. It means everything to them. And that's, God can take what we have and expand it and multiply it and bless it. That's how the kingdom works. But we have to be willing to have that mindset and let it go or have that mindset and, and open it up to other people. For some of us, that's simply our testimonies. The last three weeks, we had people come up here and share powerful testimonies of what the Lord has done in their lives. And a lot of you have powerful testimonies of things that God has brought healing and freedom to you about. And you don't want anyone to know. But that freedom that you have been given is for more than you. And, and we get it as people come in and they have these needs and we demonstrate holy and righteous hospitality. We, we show them value and love. And as we do that and we open up who we are to them, then all of a sudden that freedom that you got, that the Lord was able to reveal to you, he can now do that same work in someone else using you. You know, when it comes, I, I like what Charles Simpson said, and, and a lot of what I'm teaching tonight, he has a three-part series on hospitality that, that is just so good. But he says, when it comes to this, every door you open, the house gets bigger. And that's that kingdom mindset, is that every time we take a risk or, or we step out in faith, we are vulnerable or we're open it's another opportunity for God to expand what he's doing. It's easy to be Christian here. Right? I'm, it's, it's probably harder to not be Christian here. I mean, that's kind of my hope, I think. <laughs> but, uh, but out there, it's different. When we go into other people's homes or we invite them into ours and then we live out this type of generosity, this type of selflessness that I'm talking about, then it makes church things Jesus things. It makes things that, that we just do here all of a sudden something where God can move outside of these walls. So we all know what it's like to feel welcomed, to feel loved, to feel valued. And my challenge for you tonight is simply, let's push to be the type of people that help others feel that way. And I want to ask you, I would want to encourage you to think about what that would look like here at Common Ground. How could we how can we make it to where every single person that comes in that door, not only newbies, but also people who have been here for a while, how do we demonstrate a type of hospitality, of love, that shows value and, and cares for people that way? We have this security in Christ that lets us do things that don't make sense from the world. We have this security because we have this home. We have this, the, a room in our father's house that's waiting for us. We have that security, and because of that, we can do things that other people would never be willing to do. Another way to put it instead of a kingdom mindset is a son mindset or a daughter mindset. You know, if you're the son of a king, it doesn't, you freely give 
because you have in excess. But we are sons and daughters of the King of Kings. So let's give. And then if we're ever in a place where we don't know how or what, then we just go to our Father. And let's knock and keep knocking and ask and keep knocking and keep asking. Because he's faithful. He will provide. Can I have the band up? And if we can uh, hit the lights, if you guys want to stand up. Father, I pray that you would help us to be people that are hospitable. May we live our lives in such a way uh, that others see you in us and see you in our generosity, whether that's financial or whether that's simply uh, how we give our time or whether, Lord, that's even in just how we, we see people and how we smile and how we give them how we respond to them. Father, we live in a culture that values money and values fame, values reputation and careers. And Lord, you value people. And I pray that you would help us to have that same attitude. To see others and see them as other image bearers of, of the living God, as, as other either sons and daughters of the, the Most High or people that need to know you as their Father. And Lord, may you help us Respond to opportunities. May you help us to have an attitude that is wealth. And now, Lord, as we get into worship, I pray that you would help us just first and foremost to praise you. Because you are our host. And the love that you have demonstrated to us is incredible. May you receive this praise.